Welcome back to Willa Digest. Hello everybody. We asked what you would like to see digested and somebody suggested lipstick and I just happen to have some right... Wait, no I don't. Hey Macy, do you have any lipstick I can use for this video? Why yes, Howie. I happen to have some right here. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Lipstick can be challenging because it is wax based. These waxy components will need a temperature of 210 degrees Celsius. Lipstick often has fillers such as titanium dioxide or talc. These types of ingredients are used in a lot of other makeup products as well. So complete digestion of titanium dioxide and talc require hydrofluoric acid. But many labs just use nitric acid, which is what we're going to do today, and then they will either filter it off or centrifuge the particles prior to analysis. Well, let's take a look and see what Macy brought for us. So I'm going to assume this is the lipstick. Let's see. Yes, just my shade. <laughs> All right, so we've got a good lipstick. We've got what I'm going to assume is some um, liquid makeup. Let's see, what's this thing? Hey, Macy, what's this thing with the brush? Uh, mascara. Cool, thanks. All right, that looks fun. And something that looks all colorful with some fruit on it. I'm going to guess that is some eyeshadow. Is that right? All right, very good. Got some eyeshadow as well. So we have four good samples to use for our makeup run. Did you know that in order to protect the consumer, all of these samples are regulated by the FDA under the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act? Because cosmetics are so sticky, they can be difficult to get to the bottom of the vessel. Now this is a, actually a very important step in your sample prep because we want all of the material down at the bottom of the liner completely covered in acid. So I've got a couple of tricks that we're going to try. So the first one we're going to do is filter paper and that's something that we would use for both the lipstick and the mascara. Okay, so we would use this piece of filter paper here, put on our sample, drop it into the bottom of the vessel. Another thing we could use is a long transfer pipette that we would use for our liquid makeup. This would make sure we get it down to the bottom as well. Now CEM has lots of tips and tricks videos that can show you all kinds of ways to better sample prep and other lab practices. So just check them out in our in lab section on CEM.com and make sure that you leave us any comments for anything that you may do in your lab to help us out. All right. Since some labs may choose to use HF for total digestion of all of these ingredients, I'm going to use our Easy Prep Eyeway Vessel. This will allow me to get a high quality digest and not have to use a fiber optic probe. However, if I was to use HF, I would do a 7 to 3 ratio of nitric to hydrofluoric acid. Today, however, we're only going to run 10 mils of nitric. Now, I'm going to run all of these different samples in a single batch, which is going to save me a lot of time. So let's go ahead and get started. Here is our filter paper, and we're going to take our lipstick sample here. All right. And lucky for me, this eye is NIST traceable, so I'm going to get about a half gram of sample. Place it onto our filter, give it a little fold. Now I'm going to drop it all the way safely to the bottom of the liner. Here's my 10 mils of nitric acid. Okay. And now we're going to be ready to seal this vessel. and go ahead and load it onto our turntable and off to the microwave we will go. Okay, I'm going to select a one touch makeup method. Press start and let the microwave do its thing. So while our samples are digesting, let's talk a bit about the history of lipstick. Hey Macy, did you know the origins of lipstick go back 5,000 years to Mesopotamia? I sure did, Howie. 
And did you know that Egyptians like Cleopatra crushed carmine bugs and then applied them to their lips? And that lipstick was worn by both men and women as a symbol of status? And about a thousand years ago during the Tang Dynasty, the Chinese began using beeswax as a base and added scented oils to the mix. As we approach the 16th century, lipstick was worn in England by only upper class women or male actors playing the role of women. Oh Romeo, oh Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Anyway, the first commercial lipstick was produced in 1884 by perfumers in Paris, France. Lipstick appeared for the first time in the Sears Roebuck catalog in the late 1890s, but did not become fashionable for most UK and American women until the early 1920s. In the 1930s, Elizabeth Arden began to introduce different lipstick colors. She inspired other companies to create a variety of lipstick shades too. So Howie, what is your shade? <laughs> Okay, now that our samples have cooled, let's go ahead and open up our makeup. So we're going to point the hole away from us and vent out the gases. Now do remember on this one, we only use nitric and as we discussed, HF would help dissolve some of the salacious or other fillers that are likely present. This was the eyeshadow. And as you can see, there's a lot of particles still remaining, but this is a time where we would then filter and centrifuge off. Next, let's take a look at our lipstick. Ooh. That had a good pressure. Lipstick has a little more wax in it, so it created a little more pressure. Okay, I suspect that we're going to have a little particulate remaining in this one as well, likely from TiO2 or titanium dioxide. Okay, I have a few more samples to dilute up. Let me take care of that. Okay, now that our samples have been diluted and had a few minutes to settle out, let's take a look and see, see how we did. All right, our lipstick looks pretty good. Got a few particles down at the bottom. As expected, remember we only use nitric acid. Same goes for our mascara. Got a good digest, but again, we do have some particulates at the bottom. Eyeshadow, same story. And also our liquid makeup. It's a little hazy with some particles, but again, we only use nitric acid. With that being said, we did another run with HF and boric acid and you can tell from here, crystal clear, colorless, and particle-free digest. Ooh. These other four simply filter them or centrifuge, and then they're ready for analysis. Ah. So can we digest lipstick and other cosmetics in a single batch? Does PV equal NRT? Yes, and yes we can.